opening hymn is hymn number 460, omitting stanzas 2 and 5. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the
also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day found on page two in your order of worship. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaims, you to, who proclaims to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had been given a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer calls for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 97. We will recite the psalm in unison, and it is found on page three in your order of worship. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. 
righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes up before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His light means light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities rejo rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. A reading from the book of Revelation. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
glory to John. Glory Glory to to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples. And then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent them. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love which you have loved, with which you have loved me, may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I kind of want to offer a disclaimer, um, and especially for those who might be outside this room um, right now watching on the camera. But I will remind you that one of the things which I have chosen intentionally not to do in the last 12 years is to preach on events. It is my my desire never to talk, talk about a specific event because in my opinion, it distracts us from the gospel message, the gospel message of hope and grace. To focus on something that happened in the here and now distracts us from the overarching message that God has given us in scripture through all time. But that's not because the events aren't important or aren't compelling, rather because what we see in the events of our society are often simply symptoms of a more foundational condition. And while addressing an event may feel good, the expenditure of resources at that event often takes away from the meaningful work of changing lives or an improved awareness of God's grace in the world. And yet we know from reading our scripture and from being people of faith over time that polarization exists in our world and has for certainly 5,000 years of recorded history, give or take, depending upon how you read Hebrew scripture. And quite frankly, polarization sells at least in modern times and in modern society. I would argue that society has become more divided along lines which, again, in my opinion, and in the reality as I understand it, have a very limited 
long-range personal impact, at least from a societal perspective. Much of what we see reported in the news and see in our communities has roots in a truly antisocial network and ethics. Addressing the polarization can be a distraction from the work of being in community and working on the saving relationship that we have with God. And our scripture today is one which helps point out some of the things that we need to consider as we prepare for the end of the Easter season and the celebration of the birthday of the church at Pentecost next week. The life of faith in God and Jesus Christ is straightforward. Straightforward. Not specifically easy, but it is clear. Like the comment I made to a friend of mine, losing weight is very straightforward. Take in less calories than you burn, and you lose weight. And they said, yes, but it's not easy. I said, easy's not the point. It's clear how we get from here to there. And it's the same way with God. All we need to do is trust that God will provide the things that we need in this present moment and for all of eternity. However, we also hear that from John of Patmos and his reminder that the challenge for the faithful is to understand the world and the powers of discord that are there among us without getting caught up in the world without being swayed into the ways that the world believes. Because, in fact, the world will not understand Christians and, as a whole, will, under, will reject the hope of and in the person of Jesus Christ because it doesn't match the paradigm that we know and that God has promised for all generations. We heard... Christ pray today with the, that the disciples, and arguably that includes us almost 2,000 years later, and Christ prays that they and we will be one, that we will live united with others who very likely will only share a love of God. They probably will not be just like us, they probably will not be of the same ilk that we are, but we share one important thing in common. The recognition of God at work in our lives leading us in the midst of the turmoil that is life on this fragile earth. Then that as we work together for the common good, we will in fact realize that each individual isn't lost that each individual's importance in the world is important in God's creation, and that when we are in fact united as individuals with special talents and skills and abilities, the sum total of our talents will be united and amplified. Jesus reminds us in the prayer that he offered today that we are that being united in Christ is beyond us as individuals or them as individuals. When we live together and share the functions of, share in the function of the community at a greater level, we will in fact make a real difference. We will become empowered to look for and work on the root cause of dissolution as opposed to simply the symptoms. So as God and Christ call us to be one, what does that mean? What do we think that means? Or how do we consider being one in this world? And how does that compare with what the world says? Well, we know from experience the world says me first. To be one, I am all that matters. Those who aren't like me are not worthy of the benefits of the society that we live in because I am what is most important. 
We also know that our society believes firmly that anything that somebody else has has been taken directly from me or prevents me from having everything that I need or probably everything that I want. And the world continues to say that there is nothing that is out of bounds to get what I think that I deserve. And yet God, the person that we come to come here to worship and to learn about today, says we as humanity are best when we share a common purpose. God reminds us time and again that we are greater than our individual powers and strengths. God reminds us today and always that power, and that is the real power that life-giving spirit is found in gathering those who are not like us to form something greater than the individual that has many gifts and that the strength that to survive is found in people working together for something that is probably of little tangible and ben little tangible benefit to the group the work that we do here today is probably something that we will not see the benefits of today or tomorrow or the next day. But we will, in fact, recognize God's presence among us. I think that one of the things that this scripture helps us to be reminded of in much of the troubling part of the most recent events in our world, that much of the trouble in our society is the inability to see others as worthwhile, to celebrate diversity, even when we feel overwhelmed by the things and people that we are unfamiliar with. The, the, our society does not understand nor embrace that to, to be one who is a leader and to be one who builds community is to be a beacon of understanding and concern the Christian is focused on being with and exploring the worth of others in God's eyes, of those who feel overrun and unworthy. God invites us in these days to look for opportunities to be an example of God's grace and love to those who feel unloved. We were positing recently about those events which have been happening recently and one of the common threads through these horrendous events of our society is that many of the perpetrators come from broken families and places where others aren't held in high esteem and that's not specifically a failing of the person but it's a failing of our society obviously we are called by God to be united. So my question to us today is, how do we create unity? Practically, we don't. We're not the ones who create unity. God created all to be united, to be unified with one purpose and one cause. But what we can do is to facilitate being united one to another. We need to understand enough about God to help others recognize God at work in their lives. We need to be present enough with God and our community to build and enrich our mutual relationships with God. We need to reach out and help others explore their unique gifts that reflect God's presence in them and in others. We need to look for those who need somebody like us, not because we're better, but because we are more aware, to walk with them as we, as a group of people, grow into what God has called us to be. That is hard work, don't get me wrong, as just like losing weight, the work of God is simple, not easy. And yet, as we work to find unity, our job is one which will enrich us and make us feel whole. And while we do this, it's not our job to find 
how the pieces of the puzzle that is God's kingdom fit together. It's to simply trust that God is in, uh, in us and in the midst of us, and then God knows how all the bits and pieces fit together to make a better relationship and a better functioning community. What we can do as we move forward from here is assure us and them and all of humanity that we fit together as a community united in one purpose. By building community and unity beginning here, we will make a difference. We do it one person at a time, reaching out from this place and trusting that God will lead us where we need to go being the people that God needs us to be, doing the simple work of being related one to another. Being united doesn't mean being just one. Being united means having a common purpose today and for forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and turning to page five in your order of worship. Let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is virtually glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal the glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering those on our prayer list, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all the saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering especially those at war in Russia and the Ukraine, O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Oh God, you have made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with you. Great one another in the peace of Christ.
and a couple of housekeeping for those who have may have difficulty getting to the altar for communion we will bring all bring communion elements to you um, and you can in the there will be two cups one silver for drinking from the chalice small ceramic one for intention um, take either meter or both elements so Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his court.
for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your son for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. now as our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to the love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Nothing else, our closing hymn is hymn number 551.